<laughs> Look at that. That totally worked. It's not super popped out, but it's popped out a little. Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, I'm gonna finish up the drip rails and get my inner bad Chad on. And I'm going to attempt some sort of electronic solution to something I've never seen before in the Porsche community. Stay tuned. So my drip rails are almost done. I spent a couple hours the other day grinding and welding and grinding and welding and then finally going over them with a body file. I think I have one more round to do on this passenger side. And then I'm gonna to try to channel my inner bad Chad, which is what he does is he puts this fiberglass filler. This like, it's basically like Bondo with fiberglass, but he dilutes it with resin. So he makes it almost like soupy and puts it over every place that he welds, what that does is it sinks down and levels the area out as well as waterproofs it. So it really stops any moisture from getting in if you have any pinholes or anything like that. So I'm gonna give that a go on each drip rail and see how that looks. And then I have a kind of a cool solution. One of the issues with vintage Porsches with pop-out windows is it's kind of awkward to open the pop-out window. They have these crazy latches. You have to kind of reach inside around and open them up. But certainly it doesn't work when you're strapped into your car and you want a little ventilation. So I'm going to try to electronify them. I've picked up a couple of motors from I think a Toyota Sienna. And I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to fabricate automatic pop-out windows. I have some fiberglass window frames and some plastic windows so we can sort of mock it all up. I just wanna see if it even works. So I'll probably end up using tape to uh, act as the hinges. And I don't know, we'll just see if it works, but it'll be a really fun experiment. Before I do anything, I wanna tell you guys about something I've done in the last week or so. And many of you have reached out to me privately and said, how can I help the channel? I have made a way that you can help the channel. Some of the ways are free, some of the ways cost a couple bucks, but all you do is go to wrench.com slash high five. Wrench.com slash high five. I will link it up in the first comment below as well as in the description and all that. But basically, it's a list of options of ways that you might contribute to the show, whether it's sharing a video on a Facebook page or a forum to getting an item from an Amazon wish list that I've put together that is literally directly going to help this build because it's pretty much all supplies to Patreon, to PayPal donations, anything you can think of. It is at wrench.com com slash high five let's go finish these drip rails okay as you can see i am really close with these drip rails i have ground them i've welded i've ground them i've welded i've ground them i've welded then i've used these body files actually the flat one to go this way so as you can see there's like a bit of a low spot once i've ground this way you can see these low spots here so I'm gonna use that fiberglass technique from Bad Chad to fill this area in. I've also filled the, I don't even know how many there were, like 20 holes here. Uh, you can sort of see the weld marks. I will go over this one more time with uh, the grinder, the flap disc, and that will be smooth as butter. And then basically do the same thing on the other side. But there's just a couple of spots here on this side, a couple more little holes that I wanna just weld like right there. I wanna weld that bad boy. There's a couple down here. Uh, there's one big one right there that I wanna get. And then we're gonna be ready to do this fiberglass filler idea. All right, I've got each drip rail pretty level, and now I've got to hit the entire thing with 40 grit uh, to give it enough rough texture to put this layer of diluted fiberglass filler on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I've hit both sides with 40 grit. That should give this fiberglass filler something to bond to. Bond, James Bond. I've got each side ground and I've just done a wipe down with acetone. So now I'm gonna try to do something I've never done before. Bad Chad has a show on uh, Discovery Channel, which I've actually never seen, but I have seen his YouTube channel and he's like this redneck dude from uh, northern Canada. He's done, you know, a hundred more cars than I have. And one of the things he likes to do is he uses some um, fiberglass body filler. So it's like Bondo, but it has fiberglass bits in it. And he dilutes it with fiberglass resin. So he makes almost this like, um, like a, is it a slough? Is that the right word? So it's a, like a, a, almost a much thinner version. And what happens is when you spread this on a panel, it it sinks down into where you welded and it, it makes a nice level surface. He then roughs that up with 40 grit and then puts body filler over it. But you end up with this really smooth surface. He does that over every area that he welds on the car. So I thought this is a perfect place to try it. I've got this really smooth part that needs to go onto the 911. And then I also have the transition of the uh, quarter panels. So I'm gonna try that on each side and see how it goes. Um, I don't know much about the recipe, so I'm just gonna be winging it. I don't have a huge amount of experience in general with body filler. It's not one of my areas of expertise. So the worst thing that can happen is that it sucks and I've gotta grind it all off. And the best thing that can happen is that it's uh, amazing and my car looks awesome from it. So I've got a little piece of foam core here that I can toss when I'm done. And I guess I will smash some of this on here. So I've got fiberglass resin and I'm going to mix into this because so I guess that's what you do. All right, it's black. Man, I'm messy. You can tell how good he is at it because he doesn't get it all over himself and I've just gotten it all over myself. So it gets a little soupy. That's kind of what we're looking for here. Definitely soupier than like the normal version and that way it self levels. Okay, I'm no pro here, but here we go. So what he recommends is to get it all on the car first and then kind of uh, work it. I mean, it certainly does work like he says it does. It really does get in there and uh, fill those gaps nicely. All right, well, your mileage may vary. I thought that went on okay. I can see the fiberglass strands in there. Uh, I didn't do a particularly good job right there, but again, all this stuff gets a quick little sand, uh, and then it's, uh, I messed up that, I messed that up there. Uh, I don't know, this maybe needs another coat. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna blend it here into the roof. I can see the fiberglass uh, strands now. You can't see them when you're first starting. It's not sticky enough, so it's all blended together. But now I can see the fiberglass strands. All right, let that set up a little bit. Let's get the other side. This is a little thicker than I want it to be right now. I didn't dilute it quite enough, so it's a little sticky. But. We learn, we live, we learn. Okay, here we are. So we've got this layer now. Look how smooth that is. I think there's still a little bit of a divot. That's okay. The welds are covered. That's really what this thing was supposed to do. This is on super thin. In fact, it's almost transparent in some spots. And now this forms a really strong substrate for actual body filler to be put on. So this is super cool. As I was putting that filler on, my doorbell rang, which never happens. People usually just come around to the front. And it was the Amazon guy. And Amazon guy delivered this awesome set of metric flange nuts and bolts. These were on my wrench.com slash high five Amazon wish list. And Tim Troke, thank you, sir, for picking these up. As I work through the car, 
I think of things I need, I put them on the wish list, and if you like the content and you feel like you wanna contribute, you can pop on over to wrench.com slash high five, see if there's anything there you uh, care about or wanna get, and uh, it comes right to my house. And so thank you so much, Tim. These will be in massive use on this build, so thank you. And you'll probably actually see them in use today. So thank you so much, I really appreciate it. So I just went over the side of the car with a 40 grit on this little five inch Ryobi cordless. It's not ideal, but I wanted you guys to see what happens. It's about, I don't know, 70, 80% that I've sanded off at this point. You can see how nice and smooth it gets. And now there's no evidence of any drip rail there. You know, everything that was part of the drip rail is now completely smoothed out. Uh, it definitely looks worse on camera than it is in real life. It feels very, very smooth. It needs a little bit more work here and there, but you can see if I get really close, this is very rough. Again, this is a 40 grit. So one more little skim coat of body filler with some nice sanding, and this thing will be beautifully blended. Uh, as it sits though, it feels great. <laughs> I've got this side all done now and smooth. You can see how lovely that is. I actually probably sanded it more than I needed to. Um, when you watch the Bad Chad videos, he just kind of knocks off the top. But this is pretty much finished, ready to go. This area still needs a little bit more filler to make this beautiful transition. But you can see the low spot here. Everything else just feels buttery smooth. And uh, so far, a massive success. I have to pull my fenders off so I can do this little lower section, but neither here nor there. That'll take about a minute. Let's get on to this next project. One of the clunkier things about a vintage 911 is how awkward it is to open the quarter windows. You have to sort of stand on one side and really reach in. It's kind of awkward and clunky. And certainly if you're in the car, it's almost impossible to get to while you're in the seat. So you have to stop the car, get out of the car, pop the quarter windows. If you want just a little bit of air without putting like all your windows down, or maybe it's chilly outside and you want a little bit of airflow, it is really, really awkward. I am attempting to solve that by putting in automatic electric quarter windows, which I've literally never seen before in the Porsche community. I've seen a couple of Volkswagen guys attempt it and I think it worked out pretty well. And I'm going to try something similar. I picked up these actuators from a Toyota Sienna and I wanna see if it will actually work for opening these quarter windows. So I have to figure out a way to fabricate something to put these in the car. And then of course, wired, the wiring part's easy. It's just power and ground. But getting them to function and getting the windows to open is another story altogether. Now I have like race car quarter windows that came with this car. They're plexiglass with this weird plastic frame. I'm actually gonna try to use those for this just for uh, demonstration purposes, just to see if I can make it work. I will probably duct tape a hinge and see if that functions as well. So I don't have hinges on this thing, but I do have some blue tape which will pretend it's a hinge. That person didn't even consider stopping at the stop sign. It wasn't even a thought that went through their head. Again, this is just kind of proof of concept. If this idea works, then it works. One of the nice things about plexiglass is that it drills. This is kind of a cool system. They've got this little knot that goes on the outside of the window. And then this piece fits on the inside. You put a short little bolt through it and that attaches the window to the mechanism. All right, so here's my plan for this whole section. I'm gonna try to get this thing to mount here-ish, and I'm gonna use these three factory holes. The second one on the bottom here, I'm gonna probably have to fabricate some kind of little L bracket that'll just be welded to the base here. I'd love to make this thing removable if possible. And Again, I just want to sort of place the thing and see if I can get it to function. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a little piece of steel here out of my 18 gauge that's kind of long. I'll probably extend it to here-ish. And I'll put these three bolts on so that I can um, pull it out and then 
I'll have to bend it correctly so that it matches up with this bolt pattern. I have this amazing habit of trying to film stuff in like the most awkward spots humanly possible. And I got a piece of scrap that is pretty darn close. In fact, it's perfect in some spots. So that'll work. So I picked this thing up from Amazon. I know it kind of looks like a, a gun belt where I'm holding my ammo, but what it is, is positives and negatives of all SAE, not all, but a lot, of SAE and metric nuts and bolts. Super handy to have around the garage because sometimes you need one and you don't know what it is. In this case, I have these screws that are on the factory hinge in the 911. I don't know what size they are and I need to come up with six more. So if I don't have them, I can order them. And I will look now and see that this is an M4 by 0.7. So now if I need one, I absolutely have one. And this way, if you have like a bin of nuts and bolts, you can just grab this thing and find the ones you need that will fit. Super handy. So I got this thing on Amazon. It is called the, uh, the Original Thread Checker. And it's on Amazon. I think I probably paid 30 bucks for it or something like that. There's the tip of the day. Okay, here it is clamped in place. Hopefully that's gonna be enough. And we'll see if we can uh, get the front of this thing affixed now, enough to make it work. tying it to the roll bar on the inside. I just need a little pivot point here. So I think it's set. Let's see, a little jumper battery. I'm gonna connect uh, one of the wires. I don't know which one's which, doesn't matter. You just reverse them to make it go the other way. Okay, that's this way. So let's flip that. Come on, do we have proof of concept? Come on! <laughs> Look at that. That totally worked. It's not super popped out, but it's popped out a little. Let me reverse it again and pull it back in. Oh, that's cool. If it's permanently mounted and I actually have, I have actual hinges in here, it will articulate better. Yeah. You all see that? Let's try that again. That was bitching. That was bitching. <laughs> Yo. Well, that worked 
crazily better than I thought it was going to. That is a proof of concept that to me is totally proven. The other part that's really neat is that it didn't require a tremendous amount of fabrication. Uh, that bracket is gonna work. I need to make one more little bracket to hold it in. And if I really wanted to get this thing to pop out further, I could probably engineer some kind of middle part that would stick it out a little further, but I'm not sure if I care that much. This thing was really proof of concept and really like maybe a little more show than go, if you will. It'll give the air a place to exhaust from the interior of the cabin, but I don't know how often I'll open the quarter windows, but it will look pretty cool at the cars and coffees. Anyway, killer day with the car. I think the drip rails look awesome. I love the bad Chad technique. So thank you, Chad. If you ever watch this, you won't. But if you ever did, uh, for all of you that want to support the show, once again, wrench.com slash high five. I will link it up in the very first comment of this video. If you want to check it out, I'll also put it up in the description. And uh, as always, thank you guys. If you just want to send a high five in the comments, that's awesome. But likes, notification bell, and comments are always great things. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>